and good evening everybody we are now live or at least should be just gonna make sure everything's working as expected it apparently is hello everyone hello joshua kairu king giga as well and Berenson barger and everyone else who is in chat how is your day days going i'm just finishing off dessert How about you? Um, <clears throat> not gonna lie, Brenton, the last few days have been very stressful. And uh, tomorrow is the reason as to why. Not going to go into details, but basically, it looks like our landlord might have been breaking the law for the last four years. So me and Dane might be um, encountering some housing problems. Um, so yeah, we're a bit stressed about that, but apart from that, we're, we're doing okay. Hello, sarcastically. My day's been going good, just played Plague Inc. on console. I love Plague Inc. Of course, playing that these days feels a little bit strange now that we live in a post-COVID world. Thank you, Brenson. Oh, it's been a month today since we lost my nana. I also heard a local steam train broke down and caused a fire near the seaside town of Brat. Ah, oh, well, uh, I'm sorry to hear about your grandmother, Joshua. Oh, you mean Bray? I was about to say, <laughs> town of Brat. <laughs> town of Brat. <laughs> oh, I, I feel a bit stupid now. Hello, the monster. So, um, it's been a while since we've been uh, at Pharaoh's Valley. Like I said, I needed a break from dinosaurs for a bit. Now, if you remember, we uh, the last few streams, or the first few streams, we were focusing on... Um, can I do a checkup on you? I need to remember what we named after you, Brenton. I think it was one of the, the animals we had over here. So this was um, Horace's Palace, which is more or less done apart from some decorative work that I need to do off stream. You can see I've, I've put in the amenities that were down here. And uh, finished. I finished off off stream the uh, areas around the, um, the two enclosures we had down here. I don't know if people have actually seen this. I don't think you guys have. Um, so this will, this is the choice of decorative uh, elements I use for this particular area. A couple of planters at different heights. I put a flag up here just because I thought uh, it would make a nice touch. And then we had obviously the uh, the little zone for our two species that we had. Now over here we've got uh, the U Tyrannus. And uh, the Uteraptors over here with their little uh, village. <clears throat> uh, I think you were... Oh, there you are, Brenton. You, there you go. You're... You're happy. Happy, but a bit thirsty. Oh, hello, no guy. And thank you. Yes, uh... Horus's hieroglyphic symbol, which is the path tool is fairly difficult to draw stuff with, but uh, we got there in the end. Oh, bugger, I don't know. I blame the parents. There we go. Now, we're going to move away from uh, Horus's palace and the gardens because today's job is to make a start on this guy's area whose hieroglyphic symbol I've drawn here. Um, I've put it on a bit of an angled rock, so you, it technically is visible from path level. This is Sobek, who is the crocodilian god of the Nile. So naturally, we're going to have lagoons here, and we're going to have to have Dinosuchus here. Now, 
I wasn't sure what to do in terms of uh, the sort of environment. So I've decided on a swamp because I think that works quite good for, you know, a god of the Nile, some swampy wetlands. I think it works quite well for a crocodile too. Um, so I've already filled in the area where we're going to have all this with water. So basically I want to remove the water as we go along and keep, try to keep as much of it as possible. We do have a bit of a choice to make because we can have Dinosuchus. Uh, where is... Let me just make the uh, the lagoon hatchery. Now, we can have Dinosuchus in one of two ways. We can have Dinosuchus either as a, a ground enclosure type animal, or we can have Dinosuchus as a lagoon animal. Now, the rig is based on the Dunkley Osteus, so it won't be able to use the rock islands if we use the lagoon version. It will just basically swim around. But, obviously, if we use the ground version, he won't swim at all. He'll just walk about. Hello, Neron. So, Land Dinosuchus is better because it has custom animations. But it won't swim, will it, Barger? Which is one problem. Have I considered both? Well, the problem with both is that it's kind of cheating. I would say we need to have one one Dinosuchus, because we could probably use Nothosaurus. Or, if we use the Lagoon version of Dinosuchus, we could then use um, something else, like a, a Spinosaurus in the ground version. The problem is with the area where we're, we're putting Sobek, um, we've got space for maybe... potentially... three Lagoons. And I did want Sobek's area to be predominantly lagoon focused. So I don't know. It, again, if we picked the land based, we could. It would give us a bit more freedom over decorating the enclosure, and then we could just have. We could make it a much bigger enclosure too, but I do like the idea of having them swimming around properly. Because, you know, that's that is Dinosuchus swimming around. So I'm going to leave it to you guys. Do we go with the land Dinosuchus or do we go with the lagoon Dinosuchus? Burger says land Dino. Land Dino. Um, because that particular mod doesn't work correctly, Burger. Okay, so we'll go with Landino. In that case, I'm going to put Landino Sucus up here. Um, because this gap here is just calling out for a waterfall or something to be placed in there. And it's got a bit of a, a very awkward shape. So I think that'll work quite well for a normal enclosure. It was updated, but the update isn't working correctly, Burger. You cannot zoom inside the lagoons. So you... It breaks the old lagoons, basically. You can't zoom inside them to decorate them or anything. Like, the camera physically won't go inside them. It is a, it is a known problem. Quite potentially, Burger. Quite potentially. So, <clears throat> in that case... Let's start off with having our Nothosaurus here then, because I think we can get away with uh, a small enclosure for Nothosaurus. Now I want to maintain as much of the water around here as I can. So I think having it off to one side... Ah, 
can't make it I can't make it too can I I could if I mm. now we'll make it one we use we'll make it one piece there we go I want to maintain as much water as I can now then uh, let's put in our lagoon gallery. And I think we'll we'll put the lagoon gallery. I'm sure I cannot get away with two. Where will, where will the second one go? Hmm. It's a bit tight down that side, but we can hide that. I th I think it's better with to have two uh, a two block for the no those. Just gives us a bit more options. Uh, right, let's put in that viewing gallery. I'm going to put it in this side. Now comes the tricky bit. You know, because I think we're going to have to reduce the path size down. Uh, I actually quite like, I, I think I would like to change the path color for in here. Maybe to that brown. You know, uh, have a swampy brown coloration. And I'd, I, I want to maintain that swampy aesthetic, so... So are all the paths in this section bridges. Well, that's kind of what I'm going to go for. I kind of want the, I kind of want the whole area to feel like it's you're walking through a swamp. So um, even though we don't want spaghetti paths and stuff, I do want it to feel swampy, you know. There we go. So, like, there's one, one path that way. And then other paths will go sort of this way, sort of just wiggling through the, the swamp. Obviously, we do need to have some areas where we put more in because we want some guest zones in here too. Can we can we snap to an angle, please, path? Ah, oh, I see the problem. Yeah, so this park is, it's not inspired by mythology, it's a rebuild of my Battle of the Builders park near on, which, you know, I went for an Egypt in theme for it. But we are kind of trying to use the various Egyptian gods as uh, sources of inspiration for the animals we choose to put in here. 
Hence why the um, sort of for, for Horus's area, all of the species have feathers essentially, apart from the pterosaurs. But you know they're 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 related to Horus for the fact that you know they fly around. So yeah, that's just about as far over as I can go with that. I don't want it to be a single a single path here. I quite want I quite like having some you know just random paths just to maintain the swampiness of it. Obviously, we have our pyramid here as well. Uh, one of three on the map, but uh, we'll need to do some terrain work to uh, make that fit in a bit. Now, why can I not put water down to there? I mean, really? Come on. Uh, hands down, I think Dunkleosius was the best addition to Jurassic World Evolution 2. It really added variety to the lagoons. Yeah, I mean... I, <coughs> I do know there is a mod like that bugger. Um, but having had a look at them, they're kind of a bit small. And I kind of want... Basically, I think I can do a better job with the trees that are already in-game. Um, sorry, my D key has got something sticky on. Um, so... Well, not, not all the, the creatures will be crocs. Dinosuchus will be our sort of main animal, but that'll be up here. But we'll, we're also going to use anything else as kind of crocodile adjacent. So no, the saurus will go in here. Uh, potentially a spinosaurid of some description, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm just thinking, where can we have the path cut off for the other area? Let's go... Something a bit like that. I'm actually going to remove this since it's no longer necessary and hopefully I can get the water to hook up. There we go. Helps to maintain the image that we're going for. There we go. I think this one could be a little thicker, maybe. We can double it up here. I think we're going to use plenty of fountains in this area as well. I must say this method of, of doing the water is working quite well. I would say if you do want to make uh, try to get as much water in your parks as you can, definitely use this method that I'm doing here. Because it's working quite well. Whoops. Let's just do a curve there to double that bit up.
yeah, I'm I'm reasonably happy with this, and I'm happy with the the brown coloration as well. Uh, terrain constraints do suck for Jurassic World Three. That is for sure, Berenson. Uh, what would you think about adding Suko Mimas? Um, mm. This area here, oh, um, down from the Dinosuchus, could potentially be another lagoon or for something else. Suko Mimas is a possibility. Maybe. We'll see. Now, since we're going to be looking at doing a lagoon, Let's think about what we want to do for our lagoon decorations. Now, obviously, um, let me just catch up on chat and then we'll get into it. Oh, well, when we come to naming at the end, uh, Burger, make sure you give me some so I can, uh, can name the Nothosaurus for us. We should also think about some uh, Nothosaurus skins because we want them to be sort of Egyptian-esque if possible. Um, if you squint, the path looks like a big cartoon crocodile eating the lagoon. Oh, well, so you got the tail here and like one, like that's the head and that's like one jaw and another jaw down there. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um, right, so. Let's talk about me designing lagoons because I think a lot of people struggle to use the lagoons because they struggle with decorating them they doesn't really matter what they do they kind of come across rather boring so let's go over some general tips to get the most out of the lagoons because i think i i am basically the lagoon maestro i do so many videos on lagoons let's let's go over designing it so the first thing i think people do is they don't consider that lagoons do not have to be huge, okay? Two lagoon pieces like this, easily big enough for any of the species you want to put in. A single mosasaur fits and looks satisfactory in something like this. A couple of uh, chronosaurus easily with something like uh, Dunkleosteus, you could easily get a good four of them in here without it looking too crowded. With something like uh, Nothosaurus or Ichthyosaurus, you could probably get a good eight in here and it not, not look overcrowded. So that's my first um, tip with the lagoons. Don't make them bigger than two or three pieces tops. And I would say only make them sort of three pieces big like in a triangle if you're going to use it as like the centerpiece to a park if you're just doing it like we're doing here when we got we got it off a single lagoon section or two lagoon sections is more than satisfactory because the smaller you have your lagoon the easier it is to design it with the pieces we have Second thing I think people do is they don't consider that the lagoon, and I kind of think this is the same for when people design their enclosures as well. They don't really consider that the. Um, let's let's look at something like this. They don't consider that the enclosure and the guest area directly adjacent to the enclosure the same they kind of see the they kind of see the enclosure as its own separate area and i would say that's the wrong way to go about it you should kind of see the enclosure and the immediate area next to it as kind of this an element of the enclosure that's why here we have you know we do have the viewing galleries looking into it but we have the line of of bushes here that's part of this enclosure framing the water at the end we have the fountains either side 
to give some reason for the water to be there. We've put up the decorative power pylons to add into the stadium feel of it. So, always think when you're designing your dinosaur enclosures, same for over here. You know, the area where the guests are viewing it and where you have everything else is also part of that enclosure. So think about the immediate outside. So for the lagoon, we've got the single gallery here. That's going to be fine. This area here, I'm probably wanting to um, probably not have the whole thing as seating. I think we're going to um, cut this back a bit because it's there's too much too much brown here. So. We'll kind of do some symmetry with the other side of the uh, viewing gallery. And then we'll probably use this centerpiece to do um, some vegetation work, I think. We'll, we'll probably have a garden or something in there. Maybe not quite that big, maybe slightly smaller. Uh, no, that's too thin. We'll, what we'll do is we'll just make the end a bit thicker. Yeah, no, we'll make the end a bit thicker. So this will be, this will be garden in here. And we'll then have probably guest area, seating area um, at the ends, around the area here. It's kind of flat kind of flat here so let's go with something semicircular just to give us a bit of interest that's good now the lagoon itself wherever you push something you're gonna lose the curve so that's worth thinking about when you're designing the lagoon you lose the curved sections wherever you put something onto it. Now I want to uh, maintain a sort of symmetry here. So we're going to put the feeder for the Nodosaurus on this end. And we'll hide that with uh, vegetation. Now, for background, we're going with a particular theme, and that's the next tip I would suggest when you're you're doing your lagoons. Think about what you want the internal biome to be, because even with the bog standard pieces you have in game, there's the there's the capability to make several different biomes. So think about what we're going to have inside. We want it to to still have that sort of swampy esque um, feeling in here. So I'm going to go probably with any piece that kind of adds to that uh, feeling. I'm probably going to go with these barrier pieces. Oh, see Daisy, I got I got my camera got stuck. Uh, there. And then we're also going to go with fountains. Now, this is important for me using mods. I want to add a couple of fountains in here so that we can make it uh, look like the waters at either end of this lagoon are sort of connected. Okay, that's acceptable. <clears throat> okay, good. Now, if you are using mods, obviously you can 
uh, put all sorts of things around your lagoons. <clears throat> so I want to use rocks and stones. And we are just going to use them to uh, hide where these fountains are, essentially. Whoopsie daisy. I have noticed since the last update that Kyadenix's uh, move it tool has become a little bit tricky. Like if you get if he gets too close to the uh, to the lagoons, it can uh, suddenly disappear as it just did there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it just dropped off again. Okay. I think it's because I need to... Um, where's the flattened terrain option? I think I need to... Hmm. Well, it is technically classifying itself as flattened inside. Okay. If you say so. We need a reptile that uh, we need a reptile. The lagoon needs them. What? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have reptiles in here, don't we? Okay. I think potentially we might might need bigger rocks. There's something I've I've come to learn with this game. It's so much easier to do rock decoration with the biggest rocks. The small ones are just no help at all half the time. <clears throat> Stop doing that. Kai, you really do need to get this problem with the sort of the weird, the weird behavior near some some things sorted. <laughs> it would just make things so much easier. There we go. Just want to kind of do the same sort of thing over here. We need a few more rocks. We don't. It 
it's a shame that there we don't actually have some sort of base game rocks that we can put down in the lagoons apart from obviously the the Novosaurus rock but I wouldn't really classify that as much of a a rock really I'll put those sort of this way okay happy with that flying rock yes Sometimes it can with the smaller rocks, it can help with detail, but for something like the lagoons, things can be a little bit uh, fussy. So, I do want to have another uh, planter over here, just to cover up where we have the fish feeder. How far is too far down? That's all right. I'm going to put a few more rocks down here. About to use my favorite word there are tolerances here a lot of the mistakes we will be able to cover up with uh, vegetation Just need a couple. I think we need a couple more there. Okay, Nothosaurus Rock, uh, which is not in that section, it's in that section. Uh, I think roughly centre makes sense. Or maybe, hmm, maybe not. Probably makes sense to have their light rock platform within viewing distance of the uh, viewing gallery actually. That way people can uh, look at them when they're on the surface and not just underneath it. The rocks really want to be Icarus. Mm. It can be a little annoying, that's for sure. Now then. inside the lagoon. I want to make good use of all the kelp. Especially to, uh, to camouflage the horrible concrete pillar that holds up that uh, that rock. <clears throat> and I kind of want to try and create a sort of uh, like a Stonehenge-esque effect here a 
and hopefully make sure that they can actually swim through it, which is you know, important. <clears throat> Honestly, Frontier, the fact you haven't given everybody in-game yet kelp to use, unforgivable. Absolutely unforgivable. I mean, frankly, as far as I'm concerned, the... Uh, The lagoons are a failure, as far as I'm concerned. And when when it when it gets to uh, to doing my overall review of the game, um, I th I I think the lagoons are a dismal failure. They were implemented in the laziest, most unimaginative way possible. And people don't use them because they've been implemented so poorly. I want to have like some coloured lights in here, so if the uh, if the Nothosaurs do sort of wander in here. They will sort of show up quite nicely. Kind of reminds me of an area in Subnautica, actually, where there's lots of... Uh... I think we found it in the last stream I did on Subnautica, actually, where there was, like, that stone henge surrounded by all the, uh, the kelp where all the stalkers were. Are you going to use the Indominus Rex skeleton? Um, hmm. We do need to think about what we can put onto here to make it, for want of a better term, Egyptian y. <laughs> um, oh, I do want to, I do want to put this somewhere, the, uh, this, the whale skeleton. And <clears throat> it kind of makes sense, I suppose, to have some of these ruins about. Sorry, I keep humming. I've been I've been watching the Fallout TV when I say TV show, I've been watching the new Fallout show on Amazon. And unfortunately, it's made me remember all of the the music from the Fallout games, so I, <laughs> I keep humming them. <laughs> I apologise in advance. Um, yeah, we need we need something to make it Egyptian-y under here, the, more than just a few skeletons. Um, I don't think any of the pyramids are going to fit. No. The pyramids are a bit big. Thing is, I think these guys are a bit small. How... Oh, these, these statues might work, actually. But we'd have to... We're going to have to mess around placing them. But, you know, I think a couple of these could work. Right, let's let us grab oh, that's not too that's not too bad straight away. Might need a bit of extra decorating.
Same with that one, but that's that's I'm happy with that position of that one. Can we? I want this one to be on the kind of the skew if. Not by that much, just a little bit. Yeah, that works well. Actually, it kind of looks like he's leaning on the on the pillar there. <clears throat> this one is just a little bit out in the open, but I cannot. Uh... Let's let's redo this one. I want it. Uh... I want it looking more towards where the gallery is. So there. Let's grab it. Let's sink it down and then let's put it leaning slightly. Let's see how that looks. Oh, camera! For goodness sake, I fucking hate the camera. <sighs> I'm sorry, but whatever they. You know when they brought in those new camera controls? for the lagoons. I don't know what patch it was. It was a while ago now, I admit, but they were they were so, it was so much easier to build. Right. I think that is suitably Egyptianified, I think. Have whales really played a part in ancient Egyptian culture? No. They haven't, but I wanted to use it. Just as a just as a decorative element. I think that's the other thing that people get wrong when they're designing lagoons as well is that they try to go for like dis doing every single area of a lagoon like we must decorate the entire thing it's like I think they look better if you design them in clumps like do decorative areas rather than decorate the whole thing because it's just not possible to decorate the whole thing. You'd, you'd, you'd be there for hours. And you'd use so many pieces that... Uh, you'd end up slowing down your park anyway. I just wanted to add some lighting around. Just because this is going to look better with some illumination, I think. Another part of park building I think people ignore is to look at how their parks look in the night time. I can guarantee that most of you probably do not know what your parks look like in the dark. Okie dokie. Now we do kind of need to design the foliage around here and that is going to be tricky now then I want to use these trees as discount uh, mangroves because they do have that multi stem sort of look to them which I think works quite well. But I think they are way too big, really, for this platform. So we're going to use these uh, little olive trees because I think they can make for a relatively decent discount mangrove that's a little bit smaller. Obviously we don't want it to uh, interfere with where they're going to be climbing up. So we need to be careful. Plenty of these palms obviously can go in. They can be sunk quite deep and work quite well. I think one more about there. No, 
Let's this let's let's get rid of that one. Do you kind of want a tall tree for for there? Just one that's not too You know that would work if I sank it down a bit. And maybe put uh scrub a couple of bushes. There we go. Uh not much I think, Berenson. We're just uh we're just doing the planting around the lagoon. Okay. Yeah, I'm reasonably happy with that. Right, let's put in a few more of the big discount mangrove trees. Ooh dear, that one just disappeared. <laughs> No, no, down. Thank you. These mango trees are very misbehaving today. Uh, let's put you down just a little bit taller, actually. Yep. Uh, let's have another one of you guys sort of behind, sort of there, yep, and uh, maybe one over here, but that's quite low, yeah, happy, good, I like the tree on rock in Lagoon looks all, thank you Dr. Strange, um, just wanted something to give the Nothosaurus some shade. And it felt a bit empty without something taller there. Uh, now we're going to mix it up with the vegetation. I want to add in some colour. We'll obviously be putting more of these in when I do more of the surrounding vegetation. But I do like to make sure there is more than just the green around. Um, I think for the island, we will grab some of the smaller ones. Yeah, just, uh, just one or two. Just helps take away the harshness of the constant green. Because constant green is just... It's just boring to look at after a while, I think. Not bad. Right. Shall we go and find some skins for the Nothosaurus? Since we are about... Uh... Since we are about an hour in. Let's go looking for some skins.
I definitely saved that, right? Yes. <clears throat> A little splash of colour, exactly. We'll do, uh, we'll add any names at the end, uh, Berenson. Let's load up Notepad. Know those Saurus. Okie dokie. Now. These guys do come in a range of colours. I would like to find something that suits the... You know, maybe we could... Um find some skins based on animals from ancient Egypt. Let's have a look. Uh, or Egyptian animals in, in, in Egyptian animals. Oh, uh, animals native to Egypt. There we go. That's better. Oh god, why is it using Bing? God, I fucking hate Bing. Um, animals native to Egypt. Right, let's have a look. Um... Hmm, potentially reptiles native to Egypt might be better. Okay, we've got a few... Oh, they're all mostly quite bland in coloration. That being said, the Agamid lizards look quite cool. Okay, let's make let's let's do some based off that color combination. It's like um, it's kind of a mix of blue, green, and orange. No, the closest one is probably the Amazon rainforest. Um, what's their pattern? It's kind of black, really. Their pattern is... What happened there? That was weird. Um, I think it... I just accidentally hit refresh, I think, potentially. Sorry about that. Yeah, maybe the black. Yeah. Okay, so these are quite like the Agamid lizards. So, Amazon rainforest and lithobate. And I would, yeah, most of the other, like, reptiles native to Egypt are kind of dull in colour. So, yeah. Um, let's do, let's do a Lux Blue. And if you want to... Uh, Because the, the blue 
gold and blue or yellow and blue are basically the kind of colors we want to use throughout the park. It's a shame the Lux skin comes in. Could we just have a Sonoran Desert and blank? I mean, it's kind of bland. It's just red. It looks okay with the blue uh, Lux pattern on there. Let's uh, let's do that. Let's do Sonoran Sonoran Desert and Hello Phylax. I know that animals that live in deserts have very bland colorations because they live in a bland environment. I get that. I do get that. But that's not necessarily any reason why our animals have to be bland. I am going to have a single one of these guys, though. No, though, 2022. Uh, just because the blue is basically the same blue as I want for the park, so... Wait, let's get back to main. Let's get back to the game. Yeah, it's an enclosure f that's celebrating a god. It can be a bit fantastical. I'm... This actually brings me to something I wanted to do in as, as a video. But I, I never got round to it, primarily because I'm calling out the community and I don't want to do that. But I absolutely hate people who say that dinosaurs can't be colourful because reptiles mostly are not colourful. I absolutely hate the modern... Oh, it just crashed. I absolutely hate the modern push. Bear with me, folks. I hope that's not a corrupted save. Two seconds, folks. Uh oh. I hope that's not a corrupted save. I suppose potentially it's because I went into species viewer, but I thought that fix I thought that was fixed these days. Hmm, oh well. All fine now. Camp Cretaceous was made over three years ago. Was it, King Gigi? It's been that long. Wow. And the damage that show has done has last, is going to last a long time. <laughs> I'm being a bit facetious, obviously. Uh, hello, Navi. Right, let's go get those no those. Uh, so we want uh, uh, Nothosaurus 2022. We want one of those. 
And then we'll have three of the others. Amazon Rainforest and Lithobates. And uh, Sonoran Desert and Palophylax. Right, let's get these guys placed down. So we've got seven in here, which I think is a good number. For a, for a double, double lagoon section enclosure. Switch up back to live chat so I can see what people are doing. <clears throat> oh my god, these guys take forever, don't they? Ugh. What do you think about naming one of the Novasauruses Nigel as a nod to Nigel Marvin from Chase by Sea Monsters? Well, over here, I'm pretty sure it was just called Sea Monsters, but, um,. Yeah, we'll, we'll name one Nigel. A few decorations around here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased to welcome How big is that placeable patch of water that I have? Yeah, that's a lot bigger than I thought it was. Hmm. Might have to be fountains. Typh Typhon? Uh, I don't remember if I'm honest with you. Um, perhaps somebody could look it up. It's a bit big. Right, who should, which which no though shall we call Nigel? I think we'll we'll call the blue one Nigel. <laughs> Teeth on the thing, honestly. I think we did a reasonably good job designing the enclosure. Undyne is leader of the Royal Guard in Undertale. She's a fish monster as well, so it does fit. Okay. We'll call one uh, Undyne for you as well. 
There you go. I wish this rock had was in and came in a different colour. The biggest problem with it is that this colour, there's no other rocks that are that colour in the game. It's a completely independent colour of rock. It's very annoying. <laughs> Let's put in some more trees. All right, let's move you there. Put in a slightly small one there. Good. I think the crash was because uh, we went from species viewer to back into game, but I was thought that I had downloaded a fix for that. So potentially I need to download that fix again. Potentially uh, is no longer applying. Okie dokie. The rock island is the same colour as the Mediterranean rocks. Is it? Uh, not quite. It's using the same texture, but you can see it's not the same colour. It's not the same colour as, as the as the number two type. And uh, yeah, it's certainly not that type. Yeah, it's not. It's the same texture, but it is not the same colour. It's close enough. Well, yeah, I suppose it's close close enough to the Mediterranean style. So it's okay if you're building a Mediterranean park. But if you're building a park in any other uh, locale, it doesn't quite work, does it? Anywhere we can stick a mangrove for this. I like to make try and make it look as if one of them has kind of grown through the ring in the middle. Yeah, a bit like that. Put in some more bushes and small trees. Let's put in some of these spiky aloe vera bushes.
a new cactus. Let's just put in a few other little bush. Yeah. And can we stick any of this over? Yes, we can. Just a little bit. Okay, I'm happy with that. I wish angle snap was easier to make use of. Why are they removing so much vegetation? You see how much is getting rid of there. How weird is that? I'm gonna have to manually place every everything here. <laughs> I wanted something that looked a bit uh, run down. Looks like I'm going to have to place everything myself. Unless it will magically let me re place some in. Nope. See, it's little bits like that that I think drive people mad. I think fundamentally, 90% of the game, hello Goofy Goof, 90% of the game people are happy with, or, or not, not even necessarily happy. Um, satisfied with. But I think it's little annoyances which are, are what really makes people annoyed. Those little frustrating elements, some of which Evo talks about in her quality of life improvements for the game video uh, yesterday. You know, the fact that so much vegetation disappears when you place anything near it, for example. Or the annoyanceness of terrain constraints. It's all those little features that are the things which really tick people off. Let's have a statue or two down here. No, though... Statue. Yeah, just the one. I think that'll do. Some of the terrain constraints feel unreasonable. Yeah. Again, I th I think that's another problem. Like people don't don't mind the idea of terrain constraints. I think it's because a lot of the time the terrain constraints feel excessively unreasonable. That's the real problem.
Okay. Have I heard of the game Hunter Call of the Wild? I have. It's one of those. Uh, it's a it's a it's a hunting game, isn't it? You know, um, American sort of hunting in the woods sort of uh, affair. Um. Why can I find oh my some fountains Wrong one. Let's grab you. And let's do the same over here. Out there. Nope. Let's move you up and rotate you. Oh, you are floating in the air, Mr. Nothersaw. I cannot be having that. Around here, our Nothersaws stay on the ground. That's better. An elk being faster than an ATV. They are pretty big animals. I can imagine they would be pretty, pretty fast. Why is this one auto thinging itself lower? There we go. Just a bit of a safety uh, screen sort of affair. If we are going to have seating here, uh, I think potentially. Hmm, that's a bit hefty. 
I feel like we need something in this, like, corner. Hmm. I know what I can do. Do you want my almost trademark? Because I seem to have one of these in every park. That one's a little tall. No, 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 no. Okay. Let's sink you down. To that. Let's put you down to just a little bit above. I want you more that height. Yes, that's better. And maybe we could get away with having some pterosaurs in the middle? Nah. It's a shame we don't have sort of anything other than three pteranodons on sticks. It would be kind of nice to have something that wasn't. Maybe we can just uh, just have good old Anubis. Let's just stick him somewhere. Let's just have him like sort of. Nah. Let's just leave it like that. It's possible to kill a bear with one shot from a 10 mil pistol. Hmm. <clears throat> I'm not sure I would trust myself uh, or trust a, a 10 mil to stop a bear. You know, if my life, if my life was depending on it and all I had was a 10 mil pistol, I'm not sure I would take that. <laughs> Do we have some... Uh, benches, benches, benches. Benches? Yeah, benches.
Okay, I'm happy with that. Too big. I wish the scale of this game was a little easier to work with. Could do with some trees, actually. I need to remember those uh, those palms actually exist. <laughs> what will the Anubis section be about? I think the idea was to have some of like the hybrids there, so they could be like underworld creatures. Would I ever consider buying a hunting game? Um, no. I don't think I would. Um, personally, because A, I absolutely hate the idea of hunting. Um, you know, I, I know that... You know, for, for some places in America, they they let people go and deliberately hunt particular species because otherwise they would apparently become problematic. The problem I have with that is that people enjoy it. <laughs> they love shooting and killing stuff, and I just can't really get on board with that. I always forget that there's those flowers in there. Does hunting just not exist? No. Well, um, okay, tell a lie. Uh, hunting does, but it's not as widespread as it is in America. It's much more tightly regulated. Uh, you can go on shooting trips, but only at particular seasons for particular animals on particular land. It's expensive. Um, I, I 
don't know if you're even allowed to bring your own weapons. I think you have to use the weapons you are provided with at the hunting day. Like, it, it, it's very... It's very different to America. Let's just put it like that. I would say that the whole culture here is very different to America, especially around guns. Do you have the expanded past pylons and fences mod by Kydenic? No, um, I I wish I did and was using it. The problem is it is broken. It's not broken in a massive way. You can use it. However, if you do, you lose some of the path variety that was added into the game by the anniversary update. You lose a few of the paths, and I would rather use it when it was working at its, you know, properly. I mean, obviously, once uh, the game stops development modding will really take off because you know mod i think a lot of mod makers myself especially you know i could be using the path mod i have which which adds all the my desert and egypt uh styled paths into the game unfortunately um you know i'm sick of updating it every time frontier releases a uh, DLC, which inevitably doesn't do anything to affect my paths, but because they uh, do their DLC up and free updates in the laziest fashions that they can, uh, it screws up the mods. So I'm just waiting until the game stops development, and then I will consider you know, getting my mods working again. Which, uh, honestly, personally, I think the game will be stopping development this year, so... Um, hopefully, I'll, I'll be able to do my path mods then. That's nice. I like that. Geez, here in America, to go hunting, all you have to do is have a license and wear orange and make sure you get him. <laughs> Dear train for. Yeah, see, um, over here you're not legally allowed to shoot deer. In fact, you can be arrested if you shoot deer. Uh, venison is not particularly tasty either. Mm. I mean, I've, I've tried venison. I thought it was a particularly disappointing meat, frankly. Not worth all it's cracked up to be. I'd rather the venison had been alive than had been shot to give me a disappointing meal, to be honest.
I mean, principally the reason you're not allowed to uh, hunt deer here is they're considered royal animals. So if you kill one without permission, it's technically like pissing off the royal family, so... Don't. Then again, in America, there are more white-tailed deer than... See, I do understand that bug. I understand this perspective of... Um, you have to kill the animals because they breed too much, and as a result, that's a problem. However, I would argue that... If we just left Mother Nature alone, then then the numbers would naturally even out, you know? If we just didn't shoot anything, if we just left the deer and left the coyotes and left the wolves and left the bears and left it all alone... It would naturally balance itself out because that's what Mother Nature does. <laughs> the only reason, you know, things like deer and goats get to a point where there's too many of them is that inev invariably it's the we've killed the prey we've killed the predators i've just noticed that this hasn't has this actually attached itself correctly i thought the um the fence disappeared has that have i just only just noticed that i thought the fence disappears when you put the yeah no it doesn't what the hell is the point of that <laughs> I've only just noticed that. What a weird, weird thing to do. You're gonna, you're gonna stick this up in front of people, and then their view is gonna be ruined by a massive great big fence in the way. I've only just realised. Wait, that's what I mean, Barga. Like, you know, if we if we hadn't killed the predators then the prey wouldn't be a problem. But in my opinion, shooting the prey is the wrong way of doing it. And I know it sounds ca <coughs> I know it sounds callous, but I would rather the prey animals get to a point where they start starving to death. And the numbers come down naturally. Because the ones that survive will invariably be the strongest of the species. My problem with people going out and shooting animals is you have no idea how that's going to affect the species down the line you might end up shooting animals which are genetically beneficial to the species. And then, you know, a few centuries down the line, the species might end up genetically in a really shit state and suffer a problem. You, we, we don't know what the effect is going to be, and we can't, and we can never know. The only way to do it is to leave Mother Nature alone. Just let nature figure itself out. We don't need to reintroduce... I mean, reintroducing predators has been shown to be beneficial in some places. But again, I, I, I think that's equally as troublesome. Because you have no idea what the side effects of that's going to be. I 
I think too often, I think we as humans have this strange mentality when it comes to the environment. We know that we've damaged it. So we want to, you know, we want to do good to the environment because we are aware as a species we have damaged the environment. And I think it's safe to say probably about 75% of people do completely agree with the statement humans have damaged the environment. Obviously, if you're Trump or Republican or conservative, you probably don't believe that. Um... But I think a majority of people would would accept that humankind has damaged the environment. But I think we we go too far. We fuck it up, as Neron says, and then we try and fix it by getting more and more involved. Like, why don't we just stop getting involved? Why don't we just leave it alone? It will figure itself out. Yes, there are, in some some um, cases, we do have to directly intervene to stop species going extinct, for example, that we have driven to that point. But there are other things where it's just like, if we just leave it alone, it will figure itself out. It won't be pretty. Like I say, it's 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 callous to say let these animals starve to death until nature balances itself out. It is it is horrible to say that. But it's the right thing to do, in my opinion. It won't be pretty, but it's the most natural, naturalistic way of doing it. That's my opinion anyway. You know that apparently here in America you can pay a couple of thousand dollars for a couple of people to take you on a hunt to an elephant in Africa and that's no joke either. Okay, so um, the hunting of elephants. Botswana at the moment has an enormous problem because the population of elephants, because they've been protected, the population of elephants has skyrocketed to the position where there are now too many elephants for the area that they're living in. Which is why you can go in and hunt them. <sighs> Again, I, th I think this is a problem with how humans do conservation. We think that we can just gate off an area and call that conservation. <clears throat> And it really doesn't work like that. Hunting is multiple things. It's population control, a way of getting food, a way to make money, and also as a sport. Well, firstly, hunting is not a sport. Sorry to say it. Hunting isn't a sport. If someone was running after you with a gun trying to kill you, it wouldn't be classified as sport. It would be classified as murder. The only difference is our moralistic perspective of it. So it's not a sport. Secondly, it's a way to make money. Uh, yes, okay. Where is... Who is making the money? The people selling the guns and the licenses. People who make guns and ammunition. Do they really need more? Money? A way of getting food. Um, humans haven't needed to hunt for food since we invented farming. So the only thing that hunting can defend itself with is population control. And like I say, if we just leave Mother Nature to it, they'll, it will figure itself out. Uh, 
um i think the reason so many people who do hunt in america try to defend it is because they're unwilling to accept the simple fact that they like shooting stuff and killing it because they know that they can't say oh we enjoy hunting because then they'll people will you know say that they're horrible for liking hunting but coming up with all the excuses for why it's necessary i think is equally just as kind of a lie the u.s government considers it a sport well yeah but the u.s government considers installing dictators into countries it likes as a sport <laughs> that got a bit political, but <laughs> you get my point. Just because the government calls something a sport doesn't make it a sport. You know, fox hunting used to be a big thing over here in this country. And then it was banned sometime in the early 2000s, I think it was, because it was horrific. And there was no purpose to it. Now farmers are saying, well, you know, fox numbers have skyrocketed and it's affecting our livelihoods and everything else. I don't I really don't care. Um, when it comes to the environment, in my opinion, it was there first. We were here second. The environment has more right to exist than we do. And yeah, a few farms might lose a few chickens and they might lose some money on them. I would rather have foxes than not have foxes. And if it came to an ultimate decision, like if in some weird way somehow it was like a choice between you can either save foxes or save chickens, like whichever one you don't pick will go extinct and be gone forever, I will pick foxes over chicken every time. And it has gone it has gone a bit off the rails, but this is what happens when I've had some rum. And we get talking about politics. <laughs> we start strange conversations. I mean I swear you guys do it deliberately. You just pick a subject and ask for my opinion on it. Because inevitably I will probably have an opinion on it. So I swear you guys just do it for fun. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying what I'm saying, Baga, to upset you at all. Um... And in my opinion, that's if you are going to hunt, that is the best way to do it. You know, if you do hunt something, same with if. I mean, I have a massive problem with people who fish in this country. Like, I remember watching one of my ex partners fishing, and all he did was he caught the fish in the net, looked at it, and threw it back. I'm like, so what was the point of that? You've just terrorised this fish for no purpose at all. You know, if you are going hunting, if you are going to kill the thing and then actually use the thing, if you are going to eat it and actually make use of the product, that is... A, I'm less against that sort of way of hunting because at least then the animal hasn't died for no purpose people who kill an animal just for its head for example so that they can stick it on a wall and that's all they do with it fuck off frankly 
Fuck off. <laughs> Well, I think this is beginning to look suity suitably swampy. Obviously, there's more more trees and more bushes and more rocks and stuff that have to go in. But so far, I think it is looking suitably swampy. I think uh, some of this is going, going to remove some of this so we can put in... Uh, maybe an amenity or two because I am noticing that yet again people are not going that way. Uh, we've got lots of people over there and we've got lots of people coming up here. But no people really going anywhere else. They never do. How's Nigel doing? Nigel is doing well. Would you make an exception if hypothetically speaking all the foxes were had rabies well <sighs> well I would counter that by saying why do we why do we care about animals that have rabies because it's a danger to humans so again even if people say, oh, well, we're shooting it because it has rabies and that's an altruistic motive, I would say, well, actually, it's it's to keep us safe, isn't it? <laughs> Which makes it immediately not altruistic. Me staying silent because I live in a country with more or less stable ecosystem and hunting isn't a thing except the natives. <laughs> what can you even hunt in Britain? So you can go on shooting holidays here and I believe you do hunt either pheasant which is not an endangered species or I believe you there are um, stag shoots so going to shoot deer but as far as I'm aware the shooting of stags is very heavily controlled because like I say deer are considered royal animals in fact I believe one area where stag shoots are done it's literally royal land it's done in the land surrounding one of the royal establishments in Scotland so yeah you can't you can't just go out and shoot a stag It's all very carefully monitored. But yeah, I think this is this has turned out reasonably well. I think our little uh, Stonehenge of kelp and stuff around know the saws is good. Is working quite nicely. I wish. I I do hope they can actually make use of the archways. I know they can. I've seen them do it. Yeah, he just passed through one technically. So. Yeah, I'm happy with how it has turned out. And yes, well, Berenson's going to bed tonight. It's time for me to end the stream. So I want to thank everyone for being here. Now, obviously, like I said at the start of the stream, um, tomorrow me and Dane have quite a stressful day that could result in some bad news. So it might be the case that um, streams and videos may stop for a while while we possibly have to move house or find somewhere else to live. We'll keep everyone updated via the community tab on the channel, naturally. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it won't be an issue that's going to affect things in the next few weeks, but we'll... We'll find out what happens. Um, but yeah, thank you, Berenson, for your kind words. I want to thank everyone for tuning in while we've been starting Sopex Swamp. And until next time, please do stay safe, enjoy the rest of your Sundays, and good night.